How? And um, welcome to another beer review. Um, is that politically incorrect to do how? Do you remember how to? Um, or was it CI? Was it CITV? With um, the that presenter who then just ended up being a crime presenter. He had sort of like shaved head, like bald on top. I don't know what his name is. Um, very awkward way to start a video, but it is what it is. Um, and if I actually took a time and effort into editing, there'd be some like close ups, like proper like peak 2006 YouTube editing going on right now. But I'm not going to do that because I make fuck all money on this. In fact, yeah, fuck all money, literally no money. So what's the point? <laughs> anyway, yeah, off to a great start. So today we're going over to Farmbridge and we're having a look at a bottle of Lord Marples which is a classic bitter, clocking in at 4% ABV. Lord Marple, Marples, Lord Marples was the, Marples, hello Lord Marples, how do you do? Lord Marples, why can't I say Lord Marples? Lord Marples was the first ever Thornbridge beer brewed in 2005. Don't know why I thought it said 2008 on the, uh, you know, like established, but anyway. Uh, and named after Mr. Marples, an aspiring former owner of Thornbridge Hall. It pours an attractive mahogany, bringing forth flavours of honey and caramel with just a light bitterness in the finish to keep it balanced. 4% ABV in 500ml bottles. Who remembers like the good old days when all Thornbridge beers came in 500ml bottles? Do you remember that like big hoo-ha like, oh I can't believe we've put it in a 330. It's like, just buy two. Anyway. So yeah, pick this up from a local booth. And uh, yeah, I saw it and I thought, oh, Thornbridge in a 500ml bottle. What rock have I been under? And of course, because we're why I should be monetized, we've got brand appropriate glassware. So who needs highly produced beer reviews when you've got this shit? So we'll see what this is like. And uh, that's the sort of bitter I like, a nice darker one. A little bit of brownie ruby as the light bleeds through. Ruby as the light bleeds through. That sounds like a... A Richard Hawley song. Oh, pop culture reference. In fact, that's actually a really nice name for like a poem or something. Ruby as the light bleeds through. Ruby as the night bleeds through. I like that. I'm going to write that down and then never do anything creative with it at all. Because John Cooper Clark, Thwaites, Yates, no, Keats. Oh my God, getting on my literary references muddled. What a Terry Pratchett I am, but he comes back with a banger. Um, yeah, looking really, really nice. I do legitimately like bitters when they're a little bit darker, a little bit more roastier looking, a little bit more richer. Although bitters are supposed to be, you know, like a really easy drinking, refreshing beer. But it looks very nice indeed with just shy of a finger's worth of a slightly off-white head. And uh, the colour just works beautifully with the, uh, I'm not sure what shade of gold that is. I don't think it's rose gold. Um, it's a little bit too gold for rose gold. Um, but yeah, it just complements it really, really nicely. And oh, you shouldn't be having a bitter in a teku. We didn't have teku glasses back in my day when we wouldn't let Irish people in shops. Um, I was going to do the whole list, but we won't go that far. Uh, but it's nice to see that 91% of cis heterosexual people um, support the LGBTQ community. I saw that on um, Instagram, so happy to be an ally. Um, <laughs> why did I bring that up? It sounds like I'm taking the piss, but I'm not. My best friends are lesbians, so. But then again, is that like saying I've got mm -mm friends? I don't know. It's such a... Yeah, yeah, oh no, you can't say that. No, but yeah, you can say that. No, no, I wouldn't say that. Blah, 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 blah. I don't give a flying fuck. 
Anyway, let's see what we get on the nose. You definitely get the, the gentle hop character coming through. A little bit of a citrusy, piney twang to it. But then this nice, sweet, like caramelised nuttiness comes in. A little bit earthy as well. Very gentle aromas all around. Balance is perfect. Oh, smells damn good. So uh, without any further ado, let's get this tasted. And I'm sure I might have, um, I'm sure Adam, most of you has picked up a bottle of this or something like that ages ago. On one of the many like lockdown halls and post lockdown halls because he's just... There's me mention of Mersey Beers for the review. Um, but yeah, I, I might have reviewed it if I have. I'm reviewing it again. Sorry, not sorry. It smells good anyway. And I should have saved this for uh, another exciting live instalment of Until the Bitter End, which I need to bring back. And I did actually pick this up in another bitter whilst in booze with the intention of, do you know what? I'm not doing a live stream for a while, but I need a beer. And I don't want to try to not drink hazy IPAs and pails all the time because I do find I enjoy them more when I've had a little bit of a break from them because a lot of them are a bit too samey. Delicious, yet samey. So um, breaking it up a little bit does wonders for the palate. As ruby, as the light bled through. Anyway, that keeps... Smell it saying it's great, going to taste it, going off tangent. Smell it saying it's great, going to taste it, going off tangent. Just taste it and shut up. Cheers. I would say it's got a little bit more of a... It's not a strong hoppy flavour, but it's like a refined hoppy flavour. So you, you get that traditional, like, biscuity nuttiness, yet grassy, ever so subtly herbal character from a bitter. But it's just lifted a little bit by hops. <laughs> I'm not too sure what hops it's got in. I don't know if it's got sort of, like, newer variants or they are very traditional hops used it's been a long time since i've had a, a, a proper bitter so um just goes to point i shouldn't do video series specializing um and focusing on specific styles when i don't really know much about them but such is life yeah it's definitely got that like nutty sweetness to it Really nice bitterness on the back end. Ignore what I said about refined hop character because that swig, I didn't get much hop profile at all aside from like earthiness. Could imagine this be absolutely cracking on cask. There's a flavour, which I'm not too sure if it's purposeful, but, you know, you sometimes get a pleasant, sweet diacetyl flavour, which a lot of these sort of beers, sort of beers, right? Some, a lot of sort, a lot of these sorts of beers will sometimes just have anyway. And it's got nothing to do with, like, that batch. It's almost like I pick up, like, Slight buttery vanillaness. Vanilla vanillaness. There you go. Villainous vanillaness. Oh Peter, you are such a wordsmith. Keats and Yates are definitely on not on my side. And I'm taking a 
Smith's lyric completely out of context and putting it into a new context that's completely unrelated as to what the context of the lyrics actually are, but I'm not well read at all. Um, I do try, I have these like stages of, do you know what, like, oh, I will, I've seen The Canterbury Tales by Pier Paolo Pasolini. Some of that sound, well, that's more pretentious than what I'm actually about to say. Um, which is a good film. I'm a very big fan of Pasolini's works, especially as uh, literary adaptations. His probably most uh, infamous would have been uh, 1970s something's uh, Silo or The 120 Days of Sodom, which was adapted by The 120 Days of Sodom by the Marquis de Sade, who is uh, strangely celebrated as an author, yet an absolutely atrocious human being, and nobody seems to really acknowledge that. Um, but I think uh, Pasolini's adaptation of Sado was uh, a wonderfully bleak yet beautiful. Um, it adapts the story perfectly. There are some extracts and passages that you would never be able to translate to film. Yet uh, he also talks about consumerism and fast food and puts it in a little bit more of a contemporary setting uh, in was it World War One or World War Two? I cannot remember, but the Libertines and but um, yeah, I, I tried to start reading the Canterbury Tales. It's a big fucking book. I got a little bit bored. Um, I read Voltaire once, and um, it's actually really good in terms of like you can take the message and you can transport it into your own life and stuff. Um, so these like classic literary works where I think, do you know what? I want to be a little bit more well read. Um, and I try and I just, I really struggle. Um, I've had an Andy Warhol biography that I bought and I'm, I'm not even in the interesting years of Andy Warhol's life yet. I got like a Dave Haslam, uh, book. Started reading about the early years, not getting to like the juicy bits of like the Hacienda and the, the DJ Endeavours. I know that those two pieces I've talked are not classic pieces of literature, but do you know what I mean? You sometimes try and better yourself and grow internally. Um, it usually grows internally when it's very cold. Penis joke. And um, yeah, but... I do sometimes think that these videos are an excuse for me to actually push forth with my mental breakdown. Um, because in in real life, I'm a lot more, you know, laid back, quiet and um, what's the word? Static. Um, so yeah, I think I sometimes just use these as a way to get the basically the voices inside me to stop because they've got really nasally annoying voices and it's just uh, just shut up. Let me sleep. Let me sleep. But yeah, Lord Marple's classic bitter. Very very nice indeed. Um, it's exactly what you sort of want with a bitter that looks like this. It tastes like it looks. Not too light. It's a nice roastiness. A little bit of sweetness. Gentle uh, hop bitterness on the back end. Earthiness. Yeah, very well balanced. Really nice and drinkable, yet hearty at the same time. Um, it sort of reminds me of, you know, the way... A good mild can feel again very low ABV, but yet yeah, you feel you know full and fulfilled. I'm still searching for fulfillment, but that is a road that you know could go that could go on forever. Um, yeah. Anyway, do it. Oh, that was a bit of horrible burp towards the end. All burps are horrible, aren't they? Anyway, so Lord Marple's Classic Pitter by Thornbridge would definitely recommend. 
And if you have tried it, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Um, what's some of your favourite bitters? Okay, I'll never remember to do it, but go check out some of my uh, live streams where I've done like putting bitters together and trying like a contemporary bitter with a classic, well-established bitter and blah, 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 blah. Um, it's just been, I've got a few bitters here. I want to drink them all. I'll do it on camera, do a live stream. Probably should have done that with this, to be fair. Um, but it is what it is. And God, my hands are dry. And um, yeah, go check out Thornbridge down below. And if you watch this video, I've just realised just how grainy um, this will be. So it's going to look absolutely awful when YouTube destroys the quality as it usually does. So apologies about that. Um, but you know what? It's your own fault if you choose to waste 16 minutes of your life watching utter tripe like this. I cannot be held responsible. And uh, nor will I ever be responsible for your choices in terms of viewing preferences. Anyway, cheers for watching. You all take care. Nearly said y'all. You all take care. Stay safe. And uh, she'll hopefully see you next time. And give me some, give me some book recommendations. Even though there's nothing remotely literary based, or in anything to do with literature with this beer. Anyway, <sighs> tatty buys. I'm off to play a little bit more Warzone DMZ because I've turned back into a 14 year old twat. As opposed to being a 34-year-old twat. Or I'm a 35. I can never remember if I'm 34 or 35. Uh, but I look like I'm in my mid-20s, so I'll take it. Could lose a bit of weight, though. But it is what it is. Bye.